I'm Robert West, Professor Emeritus of Health Psychology at University College London, and this uh, presentation is about cytosine as a treatment for smoking cessation. I'm going to cover the evidence on the efficacy and safety of cytosine, the current usage of cytosine, uh, the optimum treatment with cytosine, and then I'm going to finish by talking about what I think ought to be the future of cytosine. Let's start by looking at the efficacy of cytosine. And fortunately, we now have a number of um, high quality randomized controlled trials, um, in some cases, placebo randomized controlled trials, uh, in other cases, trials comparing cytosine with other active drugs like varenicline or Champix, uh, from which we can draw conclusions. And this slide shows the, um, the systematic review evidence from Cochrane around the effectiveness of cytosine uh, given for 25 days of treatment versus placebo and no treatment. Treatment. And what you can see from this slide is that there is very clear evidence that cytosine is more effective than placebo. The estimated odds ratio for this uh, form of treatment with just 25 days, which is a relatively short period of treatment, uh, is 1.3. And you can see that uh, uh, by and large the studies are uh, significant. They show a significant benefit. There's one study by um, Dogar uh, et al. in 2020 uh, that didn't show a clear benefit for cytosine. This was a very large study which affects the odds ratio. Um, that was a study that was carried out in Bangladesh and Pakistan uh, on uh, TB patients and uh, so it isn't clear to what extent therefore um, that drugs like cytosine, we have similar issues with other drugs like varenicline, do um, uh, properly generalize to other kinds of uh, cultures and situations and patient groups. But you can see very clearly that there's no question uh, that cytosine is effective compared with placebo and that's just with 25 days of treatment. This slide shows the uh, rate of adverse events for cytosine versus placebo or no treatment. And you can see that, um, that there is evidence that there are an increase in adverse events with cytosine uh, compared with placebo. And these adverse events are um, minor adverse events, uh, primarily consisting of nausea and sleep disturbance. However, if we look at the serious adverse event profile, that's to say uh, adverse events requiring hospitalization, prolongation of hospital stays, or, um, uh, or death, then the odds ratio there, um, or the rate ratio, is around one, it's very close to one, so there's really no evidence at all that uh, there is uh, um, an increase in adverse events in cytosine versus placebo or no treatment. Now if we look at uh, cytosine given for 84 days, which is around 12 weeks, uh, versus 40 days, for example, a shorter period of time, then you can see that there is evidence that a longer period of treatment with cytosine, as you might expect, is more effective than a shorter period. And remember that this is 84 versus 40, whereas the other slide I showed you was 25 days of treatment, which is the standard uh, the standard treatment duration under the current license. And then if we look at cytosine versus varenicline, which is um, the most effective of the smoking cessation uh, drugs that's available, um, and uh, there's just two trials there, and they're both a bit different from each other, one by Ryan Courtney, which was published in 2021, um, showed that um, just 25 days of cytosine versus 84 days of varenicline showed a slight disadvantage for cytosine, but it wasn't statistically significant. Whereas on the other hand, when you looked at um, the data from Walker et al, 2021, which compared 84 days of cytosine versus 84 days of varenicline, you show that if anything, there's a slight potential benefit uh, for cytosine over varenicline, but it's not statistically significant. So in general, I think it would be fair to say that uh, from the evidence that we've got, that if you give cytosine for the same duration as you would give varenicline, for which the standard dose is 12 weeks, then you could expect to see similar levels of efficacy at least.
Then we also have one trial which compares cytosine, which is just given for 25 days, versus nicotine replacement therapy. In this case, it was nicotine patch, uh, gum, and other forms of nicotine replacement therapy given at the patient's uh, uh, choice. They could choose whichever forms they wanted. And this was carried out by Natalie Walker and was published in 2014, uh, carried out in New Zealand. And that found a significant benefit for cytosine over the nicotine replacement therapy. If we look now at um, some very recent studies that have been done on what's been called cytosinicline, which is cytosine, but um, under a patented form uh, in the United States, uh, we can see pretty similar sorts of results with very strong efficacy for the drug versus placebo. So this was 12 weeks of cytosinicline um, and the primary endpoint here was abstinence during the last four weeks of treatment, um, weeks 9 through 12, for 12 weeks of treatment. And what the researchers found was that the success rates were just over 30% for cytosinicline compared with only 9% for placebo. They also had a secondary endpoint, which was uh, smoking cessation from nine weeks to 24 weeks. And there again, uh, cytosinicline, i.e. cytosine, resulted in just over a 20% abstinence rate compared with 4% for the placebo, with an odds ratio of 5.79, which is um, pretty large for this sort of study. There's also a, uh, data from a study which looked at six weeks of cytosinicline uh, rather than 12 weeks. And similarly, we found pretty high uh, efficacy. So just looking at weeks three through six in this case, the success rates were 14.8% for cytosinicline versus 6% for placebo. And then if you looked at weeks three to weeks 24, they were 6.8% uh, for cytosinicline compared with 1.1% for placebo, which with an odds ratio of 6.25. So you can see very clear benefit for cytosinicline versus placebo. The absolute percentages here uh, vary quite considerably, but that's going to be a function of the uh, kinds of uh, populations that are being studied and the setting and the addition of uh, other kinds of support. If we now look at the data on cytosinicline safety, these are the US uh, uh, data, then we find that uh, it was well tolerated uh, and in fact they didn't find any uh, serious adverse events reported. Um, similar to the other studies, the most commonly reported adverse events uh, were insomnia uh, and abnormal dreams, um, although other studies have found also um, nausea. So moving on then to looking at uh, where cytosine is being used at the moment, you can see from this slide that actually there's quite a large number of countries for where it's licensed, and it is in fact licensed in the UK, although currently not marketed in the UK. The licenses here have kind of different um, uh, formulations in that um, in some cases, for example, it's, it's uh, available just over the counter in Poland, for example, you could just buy it. Um, and I think that's true in Russia as well. Um, other countries, it would, it's available on prescription. And in some countries, uh, such as Canada, for example, it's licensed actually as a herbal uh, remedy because it is a, a drug that comes from uh, the plant, um, mainly from the plant um, laburnum uh, and, and it's a naturally occurring product. So the key points I think to take away from this presentation are first of all, um, I think, and I think most of my colleagues now uh, would uh, take the view that cytosine is certainly an effective smoking cessation aid. No question about that. It's effective with 25 days of treatment. It's effective with 84 days of treatment. Um, even with 25 days of treatment, there is some evidence that it's more effective than nicotine replacement therapy, which of course is very widely used worldwide. Um, it appears to have similar if efficacy to varenicline when it's taken for the same length of time, uh, i.e. Uh, usually uh, 84 days. Um, and it has side effects that are similar in nature to varenicline. And I haven't shown the data here, but, uh, that, but the direct comparisons with varenicline have actually found that these side effects are uh, generally less frequent with cytosine than with varenicline. So that leads us to think about, well, what would we consider to be the optimum treatment for cytosine 
Um, now, it's worth bearing in mind that it hasn't been evaluated as an over-the-counter medicine. So although it is available over-the-counter in many countries, um, that particular way of, of using it hasn't been evaluated. The, uh, the only studies that have been done have involved at least some, even, even if it's really quite minimal, form of behavioural support and structure. So that would be potentially something to look at in the future. But there is strong evidence that behavioural support and pharmacological support generally combine to provide optimum treatment. So that then rather strongly suggests to me that what we're looking for with something like cytosine, as with other forms of smoking cessation treatment, is a combination of behavioural and pharmacological support. And in fact, there is really a, a growing body of evidence on what would be the most important components of behavioural support, what you should include. So I would say to sum it up that optimum treatment with cytosine is probably 12 weeks of treatment with weekly sessions of behavioural support. What about the future? Well, my own view is that cytosine is the future of smoking cessation treatment, or at least a major, major part of it. It is inexpensive medicine. It's very cheap to produce, and in many of its current formulations, it's generic. But also, uh, we've got um, what's going on in the States, which is a patented form of the drug with uh, a, a somewhat different dosing regimen where the evidence is really strong now uh, that it can be effective and it's safe. So that's also another potential route to market. In any case, uh, I think really what we want to try to do as quickly as we possibly can is get cytosine on the WHO essential medicines list and try to ensure that it's uh, accessible to smokers in all countries. I think we want to work hard to get the licensing changed so that we can uh, give 12 weeks as the standard treatment duration. And then uh, we want to establish what is the optimal behavioural support programme that can accompany it. Could it be an app? Could it be telephone support? Could it be face-to-face -face support? What is it that we can provide with cytosine to maximise the smoker's chances of success, but also be something that smokers would find attractive and not too burdensome?